What is up, everybody? How is everybody doing out there tonight? This late night with Gray. Um, so, in lieu of what transpired yesterday, basically, uh, I had to change up for my Thursday night. Uh, I had planned on talking about a lot of other different things. I guess I'll save that for Tuesday night. Um, I know a lot of you folks are wondering, uh, or you guys have probably been glued to the sets, uh, watching all the different types of YouTube. Uh, it's just a, an overload of information out there. Now, I will discuss some of these things uh, just because it's what we need to discuss. Also, I want to touch on uh, some other things and show you some things that I find eerily weird with this whole situation. But let me say hello to everybody in chat real quick and try to run through that. And then we'll get into some of this nitty gritty fun stuff, right? Uh, but great to see everybody there. And if you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, please do so. Truly appreciate it. And if you got a cup of coffee, hit that too. <laughs> All right. So Miriam 420, a.k.a. C-I-T-A, which is Christ is the Answer. Truly appreciate you being here. Ark Wildman, good to see you. Milo, Mama Bear J15, Rosebud, good to see you as well. Monty's in the house. Bullseye's in the house. McBean is in the house. Good to see you. Scottish Fitness. Who else do we have in here tonight? JT, good to see you as always. Love my mods. Phenomenal folks out there. Minuteman, 69. <laughs> oh, minute, man. You are hilarious, man. Little Miss Prepper. Good to see you. Harvey Black. I got your emails, Harvey, but it, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it pulled up in time, uh, but we'll figure it out. All right. James Davis. Good to see you as well. Let me see. Uh, let me try to scroll that. Seabass. Good to see you, Scott. Uh, price uh, price of wheat is going up. I have seen that. And we're going to look at some things like that uh, in regards to our economy. What's up, Dale? Pure Blood, always good to see you as well. Pantry only recipes. Uh, Michelle Minton, uh, good to see you. Sin Sin 99. Who else do we have in here tonight? Who am I missing? Empress Kimberly, good to see you as well. All right. Uh, Debbie Farrar, good to see you as well. Yarn Prepper's in the house. What's up, Yarn? Hope you're doing well. I know there's some storms up there in Michigan in that area and uh, Wisconsin possibly. I've uh, been seeing that roll around a little bit. Who else do we got in here tonight? I'm trying to make sure Chief Prepper's in the house as well. I'm scrolling fast. Texas T, what's up, brother? Always good to see you. Rena LaRue, Karen Murphy, Survival Buzz, Kit Carlson, Jeff Sams, uh, J.E., what is up? Dr. D, the Swafford Homestead, the Survival Buzz. Oh, man, a lot of you great, awesome people in here tonight. Mold, uh, Moldy Soldier, Jeffett, Mezzaluza. Hopefully I got that right. What's up, man? Jungle Mom's in the house. B. Walker. Babasia, Rebel Prepper, Van City is in the house. Great uh, having you on the show uh, on uh, Tuesday night. That was awesome. E-Wing Family Homestead, Voodoo Queen is in the house. Voodoo Queen is doing awesome, phenomenal work down there in the Discord. Uh, <laughs> eight months, Texas T. That is awesome. I just saw that pop up. Lori in Oklahoma as well. Uh, who else do we got in here? I'm trying to get through it quick as I know you guys – Want to get to uh, some information and whatnot. Mike Styles, Ark Wildman, gas went up 30 cents. Wow, that is rough. That is rough. Mark Witcher, good to see you as well. Diane Polk, not so remote Alaska. Let me see here. Do I miss anybody? If I did, I do apologize. Kentucky Ready, I just saw you pop in there as well. Shadow Scout Swede, all the way from Sweden. Close to the action out there, uh, Shadow Scout. You're close to the action. What's up, D14? All right. <clears throat> did I get you, Karen? I hope I did. All right. So as you've seen, uh, what's transpired, everybody's probably familiarized. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. I was up to two o'clock in the morning, me and Harvey back to back dropping all kinds of stuff in the discord in the, uh, Ukraine section, uh, a lot of great, uh, links to stuff in there and videos and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so if you got, aren't part of the discord yet, you should be, cause there's a lot of great information and it's fast. It's not like I have to make a video or go live. It's there. It's moving. Uh, and it stays fluid where it's always, you know, trying to stay up to date on top of things. So what's up, Colleen Rich, South Florida DCL. Did I get you, Monty? I hope I did. Uh, let me see here. All right. Yes, we are close to the action. Right on, Shadow. <laughs> right on. Oh, man. Uh, so let's uh, – where do I want to start with this whole situation? Um, I think a lot of people have been asking me in emails and, and any way they can get a hold of me via Discord or whatnot, you know, what I think the end result is. And it's very hard to predict that kind of information because things are always what we what we seem and we don't what, what things seem like, but then they really aren't, if you know what I mean. Uh what's up, Andy Bach? Good to see you. And speaking of Annie and uh 
I, I had a mail call that I was going to do today, but I figured I'd save that for Tuesday as well. I got some uh, information on the land uh, and uh, things are moving forward with me, but I'll talk about that. Uh, what's up, diabetic prepper? Uh, Butch Graves. Uh, let me see, just make sure I didn't miss anybody as I look up at the screen. Um, so I don't want to repeat all the information that you guys have probably seen and are aware of. What I want to show you is just some things that are very mysterious to me and, and the way things are going. Uh, how many of you folks out there know what that Z is? Has anybody asked the question, what is that Z on the Russian military tanks and uh, troop transports and all that stuff like that? Did anybody figure that out? I, I found a, an article explaining what that those markings are. I don't know if anybody cared to know about that or not. I was thinking zombie at first, but you know, that's just my mind and the way it plays out. So hopefully uh, that is a, what's up Hudson Valley. Good to see you, my brother. Always good to see you. So anyways, uh, I guess I could touch on that. Should we tell you? Yeah, I'll touch on that first. I got things lined up here that I want to show you folks and I want to bring them up first and let me find my uh, screen here. That is where I want to show all right, so let's discuss this whole markings on the on the thing. Zora, right? <laughs> Zora war paint. Um, you know, I thought about that as well. I, I just was very curious, and I wanted to just kind of see what it was about. And uh, I found a bunch of different articles, but they all kind of say the same thing. So I'll share this one here. Um, it says, "What is that? What is these mysterious markings uh, appearing on Russian tanks?" So, uh, as you guys have probably seen, a lot of these things here with these uh, Z's on it. Uh, and all kinds of stuff like that. So come to find out all these markings that you've been seeing, uh, and there's a varied amount of markings on these things. I'm scrolling through kind of quick because there's see how there's different markings. This has a triangle on it, a Z, um, and some very other markings like this here with a triangle and a uh, couple things and whatnot. But these are all the different markings that are on there. So they have two purposes from what this article says that identifies vehicles as Russian uh, so they don't get targeted by other Russian forces in friendly fire, and they do, and they denote uh, attack groups and their objectives. I guess uh, a lot of the vehicles and the stuff that the Ukrainian army has uh, resemble some of the Russian uh, gear because technically you can they, they were very similar. It's a lot of stuff that they, it looks alike. I mean, they're running around with AK-47s, which is a Russian-made rifle. Uh, and so on and so forth. But this denotes and kind of separates that so the Russians aren't firing on their own people, kind of thing like that. So that kind of kills that uh, mystery out there, right? Anyways, um, here's the funny thing about, I don't know if you guys watch with Corn Pop. I'm trying to keep an eye on chat too while I have this stuff up. If you guys uh, identify as a Russian <laughs> right on Survival Buzz. Um, so I was listening to Corn Pop today. And his little speech that he did in regards to these really, really harsh sanctions uh, that he plans on putting uh, on uh, on Moscow, Russia, Putin, however you want to look at it, who, you know, who he's putting these sanctions on. Uh, and uh, he says it'll take about 30 days for these sanctions to take effect. And uh, one thing that he didn't touch uh, was the oil. Uh, and I, I'm, why, why is it that he didn't touch the oil? And I'm wondering is because there's a bunch of countries, including the EU, that are dependent on these oils or oil, uh, natural gas and oil. Now, I thought about showing you guys a bunch of missile strikes and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure you guys have seen plenty of that. And if you haven't, you should, uh, we got it in Discord as well. So I wanted to uh, move that out the way. And uh, I want to show you something. If you remember the previous administration, right, he wanted us to be pretty much energy independent. Uh, basically from other countries. I want to show you what, since this administration's took over, what's transpired in regards and how dependent that we are currently are on Russian oil, as well as the EU, specifically Germany. Uh, I think they get at least 50, 50% 50 or more of their uh, fuel and, 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 and uh, gas and whatnot from uh, Russia, as well as a lot of the other parts. But so do we as the US. So let me close this out here and bring this up. And I just want to show you that how this is affecting us because if you saw gas prices are raising everywhere because Putin has that power. Now, uh, I know that our government is looking at tapping into the reserves and whatnot and some other options. Um, so we, I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out, right? Because we can only make it assumptions and speculations of what's actually going to transpire. But with this article here, I wanted to show you the difference between the previous administration and this administration and how we are dependent on another country, which we shouldn't be. We should be more self-sufficient as Americans.
Anyways, it says U.S. nearly tripled imports of Russian oil in 2021. So from 2020, uh, in the year of 2020, the United States imported from Russia on average 76,000 barrels per day uh, of Russian oil. While in 2021, that rigor, that figure uh, rose to 209,000 barrels per day, tripled in number. That's insane, folks. That's how much oil uh, that we are pulling from Russia. So to say that Russia has something over the U S I would say so, because we are not energy independent as the previous administration had wanted us to be Illuminati symbols. <laughs> I just popped up. And I seen that. Uh, supposedly the places in Ukraine that got targeted were deep state globalist assets. Who knows D14? And that's let's let's get into some of these uh, conspiratorial things. I want to show you guys something. So you guys have been seeing all these videos. Uh, Kiev, uh, the capital city or the capital of Ukraine or the main hub, right? I think there's about three million people in this place. It's supposed to be under attack as we speak. Russian forces are moving in. They have it surrounded and all this other stuff like that. But I want to I want to show you guys something that kind of. Uh, I don't know. It just seems weird to me. And let me see where I can find it at. I have it sitting here on my desk somewhere. Here we go. That's my stream yard. And I lost it, folks. But I have it here. Here we go. So let me move this over so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then I'll share my screen again. And this is live. These are video. These are live videos uh, currently from uh, from Kiev. And as if you've been seeing, you've been seeing missile strikes, uh, fires, bombs, uh, all kinds of stuff. But so right now, this is live. This is a live stream, and you see Maiden, uh, Maiden Square, European Square, Sofia Square, Kharkov, and all these other places. Everything looks quiet, silent. Uh, even in this one down here, I don't see any explosions. I don't see any fires. I don't see anything. And now I'm not saying that it's not happening. Don't get me, don't get me uh, wrong there. I'm not making that statement. I'm just saying it's just very, very weird that in this live stream, and then you can bounce around. Uh, this is uh, what is this? This is Fox News is uh, live stream. Very quiet, no flashes, no bombs, no anything oddball there. And then this is a Reuters live stream. So I bounced around a lot to make sure that they weren't like uh, this this channel was fake. In regards to the quad live streams that they have here. Now it is very eerily quiet because they are under martial law. But I wanted to show you that because that kind of like threw me for a loop uh, of what's going on. So then I have a, uh, I saw some video. Uh, it was on uh, Instagram and uh, they were saying we captured some Russian troops. And I'm like, okay, I want to see this because I saw Russian troops. I looked at their gear, their clothing and stuff like that. And, uh, this is uh, one of Ukraine's. Let me see here. I'm going to throw this up on the screen here. This is from Ukraine Defense. Uh, and let me ask you guys a question. Does this look to you like Russian troops? I mean, honestly, I mean, they do. If you, if I'll zoom up on this, but it says first Russian captives. Later, we will show you pilots. They never showed the pilots. Um, so I'm looking at this one has name tags on them right here. Uh, and I don't read Russian, so I don't. But. He looks like a, a, a kid, to be honest with me, like a kid. And far as I know, the Russian military are pretty advanced, kind of like the U.S.'s military is. It just doesn't, something seems off. Uh, that's all I'm trying to say. It's just very weird stuff. Uh, that This is what's being presented that's sitting here in front of you, uh, of these two Russian soldiers. As it states below from the uh, Ukraine Defense Instagram, uh, I don't know. It's really throwing me for a loop. And I'm going to jump back in chat now. Let me. Uh, so I went through a couple of things there. And uh, let me knock this stuff out so I can see you guys. Uh, Milo on already. Thank you. And that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to. And Christopher Alexander, more false flaggery. That's what's weird, folks, is there is a lot of. If you watch Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, uh, ABC, CB, all the different channels, everyone is showing the same clips that were all over Twitter, this mass influx on Twitter. Now, I and this is going to sound weird to you folks, um, but I come to find out where I was getting the best information at was TikTok. And I know it's weird, TikTok, right? But a lot of, pe a lot of the people in these countries uh, have phones and they're live streaming on TikTok. 
So I know things are happening in Russia or in Russia, in the Ukraine. Um, but it's just weird how the news is making things seem and what some of the other outlets are doing and how quiet the Ukraine, Ukrainian uh, government is being in regards to the uh, their military movements and what they're doing. They said they shot down about 15 helicopters. I've been seeing all these pictures of destroyed uh, Russian uh, you know, troop transports, helicopters, tanks, and stuff like that. And I watched this one live stream where this guy walked up to one, and it just looked like very old, outdated stuff, to say the least. And uh, sorry, something popped in my mail. Anyways, uh, so it just, I ask you guys, what do you guys think is going on? What do you guys think uh, is transpiring? Do you feel like it's a false flag? Do you feel like there's some other things that are happening beyond our realm of knowledge? It's just 58 too many. No, his sweetie, and you're absolutely right. Uh, there th things are happening and they've been reporting deaths uh, and injuries. Uh, I watched, uh, you know, some Ukrainian troops kiss their wives or their girlfriends and loved ones goodbye. Um, I've seen some really horrible video footage of people dismembered and whatnot through uh, some missiles that have hit in spots that, uh, you know, friendly fire civilian, you know, casualties and whatnot. Pictures from the 90s. That's quite intriguing that you say that, Voodoo. If they're under attack, you'd think they would have the city blacked out. You know, and Scott, that brings me to World War II is because when they had, were in fear of being attacked, they did black out their cities back then. And some folks, well, you know, the technologies there, Russian, the Russian, uh, uh, you know, bombers could still see that. And last I heard, Russian bombers were on their on route to Kiev and tanks and troops, but have yet to see them hit those live streams that are sitting there on the net. So, and then, uh, it's just very, very oddball stuff. Yeah. Uh, Brian Barbie, you know, I had an argument today with somebody about that. So I said, he said, he asked me, he says, do you agree with Putin is doing? I said, look, man, I'm not going to agree with anything, you know, any time of war, uh, or invasions and stuff like that. But I said, because of who we are, so we can, so everybody's going to say Putin is doing whatever he's doing is bad and stuff like that. And I get it. But my argument was, I said, and, and just because you had mentioned that weapons of mass destruction, I said, us, the U S has done very similar things. We used a premise of weapons of mass destruction to attack another country. Now I get that the whole terrorist thing and things like that of that nature, uh, and, uh, nine 11. So I don't want to take anything away from that, but it's like almost to the point where if the West does it, it's okay. If another country does it, it's not. Um, and I don't agree either way. I don't think it's cool for any person to do that. I think, you know, and it's funny, and I might get slack for this one. Seemed that they just getting started taking out a lot of students and stuck in this mess. Yes, uh, I did see uh, a lot of that. Can't we all, yeah, can't we all just get along, right? Um, <laughs> what was I going to say is, uh, and I thought it was really odd, right? Uh, during corn pops, uh, speech. And, and it was funny. I had a customer sitting in front of me and I said, Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you think anybody in the media is going to ask him about China? Because basically corn pops made a statement saying, if anybody helps, uh, Putin, uh, they will, uh, they may incur sanctions or he may do something, uh, towards them or whatever, make them look bad. And I think to myself, I said, well, I know Putin and Xi Jinping had to have talks. They've, he, Xi Jinping had to have known what Putin was going to do, or at least uh, some sort of information, uh, because regardless, they're both communist regimes, uh, and they kind of do a little bit of hand-to-hand. -hand. Some people say they hate each other, but I don't, I don't know if that's 100% factual. And so when someone, a reporter stood up and said, hey, and they mentioned the word China to Corn Pop, all of a sudden he said, I uh, no comment on that. And the reason I feel that way is because if China was to get involved or say in support of Putin or Russia or whatever and what they're doing, uh, they've already said that the that uh, I forget they they've already badmouthed the U.S. in regards to the whole situation because we've been we've been sending uh, you know armaments and stuff like that to the Ukraine. So China has already said a few things, but if Putin uh, circumvents the whole system and works with China for you know <laughs> yeah right. Hold on, I saw, saw what you said, Milo. I was trying to find it where it was. The gray state, right on. <laughs> yeah, the gray state. Dang it, Milo, where did it go? Oh, and China gives a... Yeah, exactly. So, Milo, 
Funny thing. So do you think the U.S. would actually actually try to impose sanctions on China? Being that we get so much of our medication, antibiotics, and everything from China, as well as goods uh, from China, the amount of stuff that we import uh, from China that they export to the U.S., all China would have to do is say, okay, well, we're just going to cut you off. So they kind of have us by the, you know what, uh, <laughs> without saying it, uh, if that was the case. So I think there's a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just a lot of misinformation, a lot of, uh, you know, look over here, not over here. It just seems a lot of crazy stuff is going on behind the scenes. Uh, and Rhonda Willis, you're absolutely right. Uh, I've looked into Ukraine. Uh, they have large deposits of plutonium. They have large deposits of lithium, uh, which are used for uh, the smart cars and whatnot, or batteries for the you know smart vehicles or whatnot. It's a very uh, rich in minerals in general. Uh, that country. Uh, RCX. Uh, yeah, we could touch on that as well. Is that during? Uh, I, I want to say there was some stuff going on in the Obama administration in regards to Ukraine, and I think it was was it 2014. Uh, exactly, Minute Man 69. It was somewhere there, but basically we got involved. We basically put we put our puppet in Ukraine, which is the, the you know, the 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 president or whatever they call him there now, uh, because he was uh I guess more friendly to the West or whatnot. Because before that it was a Russian uh president of Ukraine and he was more friendly with the Russians. So that kind of stoked the whole bear kind of thing like that. And uh, I'm assuming that's what Putin wants to do is to replace the current government with his government in there, you know, to basically, uh, I don't know if it's like a puppet government or whatever you want to call it. I, there's a term for it, but I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Resources and war and Paul Frey, a lot of things are always based on resources because that's, think about what, uh, you know, Kuwait, think about, uh, you know, when we went to Kuwait and to, to push out, uh, I think Saddam and whatnot, and then Iraq and all that stuff like that. And the middle East is just rich in oil in general. Uh, and I think, a lot of that had to do with that. But a lot of people said it wasn't just that. It was also, and I, and I know, like I said, some people may not agree, but I guess they're very, uh, they have a lot of poppy fields as well from some of the people that I've talked to. Uh, it's just one of the biggest producers, I think, out there. I think it's Afghanistan. I think it's Afghanistan has the poppy fields or whatnot. I'm sure they will be helping each other, possibly running interference for each other. Possibly Mama Bear. A, a, a good point. Report from Iron Mountain. Let me see here. I think that what's happening cannot really be compared to any war in the past. The world is such a different place. Advances in weaponry and technology. And Galavidian, I can agree with that. Um, it is definitely a different thing. And a lot of people have been talking about the um, the cyber attack uh, that what may ensue. Because uh, let's say, uh, you know, Putin is, is extremely upset. He's going to be mad or whatever with the sanctions. And that's a way for him to get back at the U.S. Uh, in regards to cyber attacks. And what what does the U.S. thrive on? And they are it's our grid. Our grid is the most important thing. I, not the most important thing, but one of the most important things that keeps this come our, our our country the way it is. Uh, if they ever did attack our grid, uh, how severe would it be, and how long would it take it to get back online? And let's say if it took thirty days to fix it, right? Just imagine the chaos that would ensue if the entire United States went down. And I wouldn't say the military would go down because I'm pretty sure they're hardened compared to what we, uh, you know your average citizens are. But just imagine the chaos in big cities like New York and California and Chicago and places like that if there was absolute no power, just straight blackout. I, I can only imagine the chaos that would ensue uh, and the death toll that I would uh, follow behind that. Let the Russia have Chernobyl. It was their fault. It melted down. You cannot use it anymore. <laughs> right on. What's up, Daily Prepper? Good to see you as well. So there's just a lot of different information floating around in regards to this whole uh, invasion of the Ukraine. And I've, I've watched 10 different news outlets, uh, 50 YouTube channels, trying to grasp every aspect that I can see to absorb this information to kind of make my own, I guess, uh, informed decision on what I think is going to happen. Uh, I'm waiting to see. That's why I still have that screen up <coughs> on Kiev because I'm I'm waiting to see what transpires because I'm curious while we're sitting here on this live stream if it goes sideways. Um, so I haven't seen nothing yet. Uh, there is some uh, different uh, little 
what are they called skirmishes and whatnot that are happening, uh, you know, around the outskirts and whatnot. Uh, and been seeing that, but I haven't seen them go in to Kiev to basically remove uh, the current government. Uh, I don't know if they're, they're not called parliament, but they're, they're, but the president and his, uh, his folks there. What's up, Paul Frey? Uh, Grove laying out. Yeah, it is one big mess. And I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be resolved anytime soon. The economic impact in the U S is my main concern. Uh, I know I don't get me wrong. I do care, uh, that anytime there's war and there's death, and people, because it's always the civilians that get caught up in this crossfire uh, with stuff. You know what I mean? Just like, okay, the sanctions on Russia are going to hurt the Russian people. Uh, I'm assuming the Russian people don't deserve uh, what's happening to them due to their leader making these decisions or the politicians that are making these decisions, right? Uh, so it sucks when uh, when things like that happen and people you know, lose their life uh, for certain situations. So that is uh, something that concerns me. Uh, thank you, uh, Yarn Prepper. I appreciate the thumbs up uh, thing. Let's send the uh, UN peacekeepers. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the Joe Info. That would be that's that's what they should do, right? Uh, and we're amassing. I know uh, troops left from Fort Bragg uh, and a couple other uh, bases uh, over to push over to Poland uh, and some of the other spots over there. Uh, I think was it Romania? They're they're moving our troops because uh, we're aligning with NATO to kind of reinforce that to basically. We I, I'm pretty sure that. My assumption is that he is going to take Ukraine. Uh, he, you got to look at Ru so you got Russia, China, and the U.S. We're like the three mega powers, right? Uh, with our military, uh, and I'm assuming the Russian military is pretty technologically inclined. Uh, they have a lot of weaponry. It's a huge force to uh, be reckoned with. Matter of fact, I did some research. Excuse me. Come to find out, Russia has more nukes uh, than the United States. Uh, I think Russia is the top dog when it comes to nuclear. Uh, warheads and whatnot. Not to say that that's what I'm I'm expecting. Uh, and I, I watched a whole talk show about, uh, you know, if things were to go south and Putin was to push into Poland, uh, which then would amp up because it's a NATO ally. Yeah, the ETs come in. Yeah, that, that would be something. Um, where am I at? Uh, I forgot. I lost my train of thought because I got lost in chat. My my apologies. Where was I at? Damn it. <laughs> I always mess up sometimes. Oh boy. Yeah. The troops over there. So because I'm, my assumption is, is if I just don't know if he's willing to go that far with it uh, because he, he basically laid out what he wants to do. He wants to bring back, he wants the U uh, you know, the USSR. He wants to take back the land that was lost through that whole process with Gorbachev and all the other stuff. Right. Uh, yeah, thank you, B. Walker. <laughs> that just sounds bad. And I'm assuming you probably did that. Runaway choo-choos. What's up, Creative Redundancy? Um, yeah, always remember, never forget, right on. Um, hey, Gray, you were at Poland. Uh, thank you. And you guys are awesome. Thank you, Janet. So anyways, so you have all these troops that are amassing there because if he decides to go a little further with the whole situation and once he takes Ukraine, which my assumption is he is, uh, because they're no matter how good and how strong those folks are, the Russian military is a lot more stronger and I'm not saying they're better. I'm just saying, I, I don't want people to take what I'm saying wrong. Uh, like I'm trying to hype up the Russian, you know, military, but it's just, uh, it's like us, if, if the U S was to move into a, a place like the, cause basically I think Ukraine is about the size of Texas or a little bit bigger. Uh, if the U S was to move on a thing like that most likely the U S would win because of our superiority in regards to our weaponry, uh, our troops and stuff like that. So that's how I look at it. Um, so let's say he takes Ukraine and then he decides that he wants to go further with it and push into, let's say, uh, Poland, which is the border of Ukraine. That's when I think things would heat up even worse. Now there's rumors of stuff like that. That's why I'm assuming that we're sending troops that way. Uh, and you know, <laughs> What really bothers me is there's a lot of things going on in our country, um, like our southern border. We're so focused on other countries that sometimes we forget that the problems that we have at home and why they're not resolved. Like, I don't understand why Corn Pop didn't say, okay, well, what we could do is we can uh, not buy oil from Russia. Why don't we restart the Keystone Pipeline and finish that and get that rolling? Why don't we do, uh, you know, why don't you re leave the restrictions 
uh, from, you know, uh, Alaska and other places where they're looking for natural gas and oil as well. That would resolve us depending on Russia for oil and uh, make us more independent. But he's not going to do that because the previous administration was doing that. And of course, orange man bad. And, you know, you can't reinstate any of his policies, even though we had one, probably one of the most, uh, decent economies that we've ever had in quite some time if you guys gas prices are almost well i'm pretty sure gas prices have almost doubled to this point where we're at we are well, we are not the world police and bonnie exactly you know i always wondered that why do we always have to to to, to get involved in everything around the world and when people say the word nato i don't say i you know nato's without the u.s nato would be nothing that's how i look at it without the u.s nato would be nothing um, they need the money that we give them and they need our forces that are aligned with NATO. Um, the, the air force, I forget, there was numbers that I was looking at in regards to the whole air force and that stuff like that. And without that, they would only have like 20,000 planes versus like, you know, a hundred and some thousand planes or some, some crazy number like that. Don't quote me on that, please. But, um, Hey, David McClellan. Uh, yeah, ex exactly. Better late than never. What's up dreams acres. Isn't it going to mess up his own agenda? For that matter, yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a lot of crazy questions to be asked. I appreciate that, Diane. I appreciate that. Yeah, Chief Prepper, I agree with Sam the whole with the United Nations thing. Duke, I saw that. Hmm. That is a good deal. Uh, Frontier Prepper says uh, they just shut down one of the road projects to the mines and potential oil wells. And and uh, and Frontier, he lives in Alaska, so this is valid information because it's coming from someone that's living there. Uh, and that's, that's crap. That's, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we have coal, we have oil, we have natural gas that we could export. And if we wanted to, to make money off that and help, let's say we wanted to, uh, it would cost them more. It would, it would cost them a lot more to export our oil and, uh, you know, liquefied, uh, natural gas and stuff to send to the EU. But like I said, Germany, uh, depends highly the EU in general. Ger Germany's more, but the EU in general, I think, forty percent of their energy comes from Russia. So it's just very odd how all this is playing out in regards to what they're trying to sanction and whatnot. And uh, there were some great questions in that uh, whole uh, whatever corn pops uh, you know address to the to this to the American people. Sorry, I was just taking a moment to check. Uh, Jan, that's awesome. Uh, USA has at least six bioweapon labs in Ukraine. And Alfred, you know, I read that as well. Uh, I think there was a little bit more. I don't know if it's just six, um, but I saw the map of the of those bioweapon labs in the Ukraine. And I thought to myself, why do the, why does the U.S. have bio labs in the Ukraine? <laughs> it's just another question that popped in my head. <laughs> well, I hope your car is fine, Jan. Yeah, it was. I'm a survival. And, and, it, and it is going to be upsetting for a lot of folks. Um, and then I saw protests protest uh, in St. Petersburg, Russia, and all I saw was the Russian police basically arresting people because it's a communist country and you really don't have much room to protest against the government because they control you. Now, there's something that I was going to bring up, but I decided I'm going to save it for Sunday. I'm trying to see. I have it here. Let me give me a second. I wanted to I wanted to ever ask you guys if you guys have ever heard of this and uh, I'm planning on doing a video on this. Uh, because I never know too many people have talked about this on YouTube and now maybe someone will, because I'm going to bring it up, which is cool. The more of us talking about stuff like this is thing, but I want to talk about ideological subversion. I don't know if anybody out there that's watching right now has heard of ideological subversion. It's something that I'm diving into and I'll be honest with you. It's quite intriguing. It almost lays out what's happening in our country and across the globe. And it's something that was drawn up in the 1970s by a Russian spy or a defector from the KGB that was a Russian spy that went to Canada back in the 70s. And they've kind of dismissed it back in the 80s. But when you look at what it is, it kind of it's like a roadmap to where we are right now, like exactly where we're at right now. Yeah, Milo, good question right there. Good question. Is there a good explanation for that? The author of confusion has been permitted to have control. He's limited in his time with the power of throwing everything at us. Pray out. Cease. Sorry, I'm just trying to read. Gray man, what are your thoughts on our military being scattered everywhere after they scatter those military age refugees around the country? Yeah, pure blood. 
uh, our military has lost a lot of folks already uh, due to, you know, the, uh, you know, the thing, right? Uh, and a lot of things have changed in our current military structure. And what you're saying is, is basically, as we're sending troops here, we're sending troops there, makes us more vulnerable uh, here in the U.S. Now, if you're asking me if I think that I think uh, anybody would come and put boots on the ground here in the U.S., I doubt it. Uh, they don't. Our military is one thing, but us, the people, we, the people, uh, I think we would put up a good fight if anybody ever landed on our shores, uh, just because of our Second Amendment, and that's why. We have no matter whatever happens, if we ever lose our second amendment, then our country's done. You know what I mean? Our country's done, which I don't think the people would ever let that happen. And Chief Prepper, you're, you're, you're t took the words out of my mouth. What's up, JM? Good to see you. Uh thank you, JM. I was wondering if anybody else out there knew what it was about. And I want to, I'm probably gonna talk about it on the Sunday shift report. Uh after the military lost personnel, the only way to get more soldiers may be a draft. <clears throat> Frontier preppers, that might be a possibility as well. And uh, it's ironic. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that in Ukraine, the president, uh, if you're 18 to 60 years old, or is it 18 to 60 or 18 to 80? I don't know. Somewhere around there, men of that age are not allowed to leave the country. It's the president said you can, or it wasn't the president, it was the, uh, the person next to him, one of his people. Uh, made a thing that says that you cannot leave the country if you're between the ages of 18 and 60 and you're male uh, because we need you here. Uh, Mama Bear, I agree. If I, To me, the two possible things that I could think of that would come out of it if, if we were to be attacked uh, would be either a cyber attack because they could say the cyber attack came from Russia, right? They could say that. And it may be the Russians who are using a cyber attack to hit the U.S. Someone told me today, like, oh, well, you know, we, we have a hardened system. I'm like, yeah, but remember the pipeline and, and all the other stuff that happened last year? I said, so the ability, the, the option is there. They could always blame someone else. I mean, don't forget there's other players in this game. You do have Iran. You do have North Korea. You do have the Chinese uh, and a couple other folks out there that would love to hack into our system and, and affect our grid or some other infrastructure in the U.S. My other odd thing is, is uh, worst case scenario is an EMP. And uh, I know I'm, I'm going way off the out of the box with that because you would assume that we would see an EMP coming from, you know, from another country. Uh, and as Dr. Bradley said, when we talked about that, that most folks wouldn't even know an EMP happened uh, because uh, the explosion at such a high altitude, just everything would stop working. Now, then we can fall back into those hypersonic missiles uh, that the folks have been testing uh, and how fast they can reach U.S. airspace. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things to ponder uh, what could happen. And, and we, like I said, we could only assume uh, and try to make, uh, you know, be speculative in what we think may happen. Uh, and I agree, though. I just really doubt that. I don't think anybody has the cojones uh, to put boots on the ground in the U.S. unless unless uh, we were crippled uh, by our infrastructure, if we didn't, if the grid went down or an EMP was hit with the U.S., that is, it'd be like a one-two punch. You know what I mean? Cyber tech, grid down, uh, chaos in the streets, our economy collapses, uh, and then that would leave room. And, and, and remember, if you guys remember one thing with Russia, how close we are. If you go to Alaska and you look at Alaska and Russia and how close they really are, uh, that could be a, uh, an entry point. I don't know. I'm just, you know, kind of theorizing different possibilities. My car never starts when I saw something that made me laugh. My car never starts anyhow, right on alien prepper. You got to use your hyperdrive, man. <laughs> Love it, man. I agree. We'll fight tooth and nail. I was just wondering if you thought that it might be part of the plan from within and pure blood. To me, there's some things that that are going on behind the scenes uh, that the American people don't know. And I saw, you know, I'm not huge into memes. I know most of you folks know what a meme is, right? But I saw an interesting meme, or it was a meme that was shared with me. And it said, uh, the 1% control the world. The 4% enforce what the 1% want them to do. Then you have the other 5%, and this is the U.S., another 5% 
like us, we the people that are awake and we are willing to fight. But that leaves the other 90% that are asleep. So the meme made sense to me. 1% rules the world, uh, the 4% that helps push their agenda, and then the 5% of we the people that are awake and trying to fight for freedom, and then 90% of the rest of the population that is asleep that has no idea what's going on and or nor that they, do they care possibly. <laughs> Christopher, you've made some good memes. I only know of Mead. <laughs> That's great. Big brother in little China. <laughs> but uh, to me, it just resounded with me. Uh, and, you know, there, I, I, I'm not huge into memes, but that one I, it just happened to pop up and it was shared with me. And I was like, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Um, let me uh, let me check on something real quick before we move on to the next things. But the sheep are waking up. And I hope, uh, Mama Bear, I hope that more of us that people that's that's why I'm so huge in uh, telling you the viewers to please when I do a video to share you know if you have Facebook if you have Instagram if you just want to tell your friends if you want to hey check out this channel uh, and maybe they'll find me and they'll like what I have to say then through me they're finding other channels let's say I do an interview uh, with Van City Prepper or or, or I, you know over at Alaska Prepper or we're all mixed in and we start to bring people into the fold. And listen to different content creators trying to spread the message of preparedness because that's the that's the biggest part of all this that we should be thinking. Because while I was looking at all those videos yesterday of all the bombs and airstrikes and all that stuff like that, you know what I saw in the morning? I saw massive lines at the gas stations, massive lines at the uh, the pharmacies, massive lines at the banks. Uh, everybody was panicking. So those folks, unfortunately, and nothing against them. But they they weren't prepared, you know what I mean. In the aspect, if something was to go south, so the way I look at it is, the more people that we can wake up and get them on the mindset of being prepared, even just starting to getting to prepared, you know, putting some food away, some water away, some medical supplies, just everything, and just get them in that process. Because being a prepper uh, is not a it's not a hobby. You know what I mean? It's a lifestyle. And this is the way I choose to live. And I hope that most of you folks choose to live because it brings that security to you and your family. Um, I like knowing that if the grocery stores were to close for some oddball reason, something happened and the grocery stores were to close that I at least have a year's worth of maybe more at this point, at least a year minimum in my home that I could feed my family, that they won't starve. That gives me a uh, peace of mind. Uh, so, and I know a lot of people when they get, they start prepping in the beginning, they're like, wow, this, this costs a lot of money, but I've, I've done videos. A lot of other prepper channels have done videos in regards to affordable ways like dollar tree hauls, uh, and different things that you can do to save money, sales and coupons. And there's, there's a lot of great information out there. And I know I'm going a little bit of, uh, uh, off the rails with what I'm talking about, but the key thing here is us as preppers or new folks out there, it's just being prepared. Uh, is Rudy in the house? <laughs> good, evening. good to see you, brother. Good to see you. So if you've gathered anything from that, if you've watched outside of all these, uh, you know, these violent videos uh, uh, of the, you know, the Russian military moving in is what really resounded with me is those long lines. Um, <laughs> That's funny, Joni. Um, is the line like I said, there were lines at grocery stores, lines at banks, lines at gas stations, lines at pharmacies, and then look at the traffic jam on the way out. Every time there's a crisis, a hurricane, natural disaster, war, whatever the situation is, there's always a mass exodus out from, let's say, and Kiev is a big city, uh, I think population over three million, which is a lot of people. Um, to me, I would rather be in a position where I'm prepared and I don't have to leave somewhere. And I know some people are going to say, well, they're being bombed. I, I, I get it. Uh, but I would prefer not to live in a city that dense either. Um, but hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to say and relate to this. Now, before it gets too later, I want to bring up this other thing because it's not being in the news. I haven't seen it in the news and some of my Canadian friends have brought it to my attention. And I want to show you guys something. I don't know how many folks are aware. How many folks out there, other than the people that are from Canada, have been watching what's happening in Canada the last few days. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with the term a bank run? I don't know if you ever heard that term bank run. Uh, it was used uh, back in the, I think in the 1930s, great depression. 
Uh, I want to bring up an article in regards to that. War, rumor of war, sound familiar? Yeah, B. Walker, it does. It was so busy at Costco yesterday, my wife wouldn't even go inside. That's crazy. Costco that busy, huh? People, Even people in here in the U.S. Uh, creative redundancy, you did hear about that? Um, so let me bring up an article to show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's back this up to the beginning of this article. And uh, let me just share this with you, and then we can discuss it. Because to me, this is... From my understanding, if every American in the U.S. went and withdrew all their money out of the bank, uh, it would collapse the banking system because they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. Uh, and they would probably do the same thing that the Canadian banking system did. So let me add this here. Uh, basically, it says war on cash warning. Canada's major banks mysteriously go offline. So the reason behind this is, of course, Trudeau, you know, put a freeze on people's bank accounts that were in the trucker protest, right? So people outside of the protest got concerned that if it could happen to them, it could happen to, to even if they weren't at their protest, just by guilty by association or just this or that people just got scared. So people started going to the bank and pulling out all their money in Canada. So basically it says, what would you do if you went to the ATM and found out that you couldn't access the money in your bank account? A lot of folks would probably freak out. How many people have cash on hand? How many people have silver or precious metals or tradable commodities? And he says, many Canadians recently suffered this unsettling experience. Customers of five major Canadian banks re reported mystery mysterious online banking outages last week after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced he was invoking emergency powers in response to a massive trucker protest. This gave the Canadian government the authority to freeze bank accounts. That's what got this started. Anyways, so an article in Zero Hedge uh, reported that Royal Bank of Canada, RBC, BMO, Bank of Montreal, uh, and I'm going to butcher this name, Scotia Bank, TD Bank of Canada, and the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce were all hit by the unexplained outages. Um, and I think it says outages because when you go and watch Canadian news, uh, a lot of them were saying they, they were telling people, people in parliament were telling people, please stop going to the bank and taking your money out. Um, anyways, so they would, they'd be faced with a, a little thing like this. that says, uh, your tap, your transactions aren't available. Even when they tried to use their card, it was unavailable because just imagine if you, if you take all your money out of the bank, if let's say every American or majority of Americans went to their bank and took out every dime out of their bank right now. It would create this vacuum and uh, it would cripple the baking industry, possibly even collapse it. But anyways, uh, this person wrote, I have no access to my money at the grocery store. Keyword, had no access to their money at the grocery store. Come to find out there was a nationwide RBC, sh RBC sh outage affecting my accounts. What's going on here? I've been waiting at the checkout line for 30 minutes. I'm hoping it will work. I'm going to have to leave because I now have no money because all their money's in the bank. And the banks were frozen, or outages as they'd like to call it, uh, so they could not buy groceries. Anyways, I just wanted to touch on that. If you guys were familiar what was going on in Canada, because the news is focusing so much on the Ukraine-Russian thing, I haven't seen much of it. And uh, a friend shared that with me, and I wanted to share that with you. Mary Beth G., that is awesome. That is very awesome, Mary Beth. And I'm really curious to see how the whole trucker convoy all plays out, uh, you know, here in America. If we're going to be strong like the Canadians tried to be as well. They set the bar, I think. You know what I mean? Thanks to you and Rudy, uh, we all have precious metals on our uh, on hand. Well, I appreciate that, Milo. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm trying to see if a uh, trucker convoy came through Arizona. I got that one. I'm backing up a little bit. They won't let you withdraw before that happens. Exactly, Duke. Uh, here's the funny thing. Just uh, just imagine this. I don't have a bank account. I deal in cash when I don't have any more in my pocket. I can't buy it. Right on, Minute Man. Um, <laughs> uh, where was I going to go with this? Um, if you were to go to the bank right now, right? Let's say you had $10,000 and you wanted to deposit that $10,000 into your bank account. And then you said, you know what? The next day you said, I'm going to pull that $10,000 back out because I want to go buy a car, a used car or whatnot, because you probably can't buy a car for ten dollars you go to that bank the next day and you try to get that $10,000 back. They're going to tell you that you have to wait or call it in because they have to go get the money from someone else. Because as soon as you deposit that money in the bank, 
they're loaning it at, at another window or another office. So that your money that you just deposited is really not your money. It's now the bank's money, even though it shows on a, on a ledger and on your, on your little phone thing, it says that you had that money, but that money, that cash just got loaned out to some guy that was getting a loan for whatever. So it just, it's don't, I, I don't trust banks folks. I put enough in the bank to cover bills when they need to be paid. Other than that, I, I won't do it just because I don't want to be put in that position. I don't want to be put in that position. Terry Very, that's very smart. Foam 2C, bank run, yes. And you get reported to, yes, Frontier Preppers, exactly. That's very true. Any transactions uh, of that magnitude would get reported to the IRS. And of course, then you're going to be under a microscope while you're doing what you're doing, why you have this much cash and, and all that stuff like that. Uh, as a former business owner, I understand perfectly. What did JM say? I'm trying to back it to where JM was at. Where are you, JM? There's JM's comment. They won't give you it anyway. Here we have to give no, uh, notice over a certain amount and come back three days later. So imagine that, JM, and, and what JM said. Imagine you have to wait three days for your money. You have to wait three days for your money. Isn't that ridiculous? Does that make any sense to you folks out there? This is why, again, I just put enough to cover my expenses. And yeah, it's, and like Rudy says, it's fiat currency. It's a debt note. You know what I mean? Uh, and if things keep on going, matter of fact, uh, a lot of you folks, uh, a lot of my folks watch Alaska prepper and he did a great video that I watched, uh, today, uh, of the, how things can turn out. And he went through the whole process. He's very good at the financial aspect, way better than I am. And, uh, and that's why I watch the content because I can learn great information from that content that makes me more informed as, a, as someone in the preparedness community. Uh, but there was a great video. If you haven't seen it, you should go check out the Alaska Prepper. I know I, one time I was on, on, on a live stream and we mentioned the Alaska Prepper and, and someone in the chat said, who's Alaska Prepper? I'm like, you need to go check him out. Oh, man. That was crazy because I figured everybody knows who Rudy is. Uh, Michelle says, uh, I have lived this way for decades, zero trust in government or banks. I take any money out ACP. Roger that minute. Man, I know, I'm going to read it. Minute man says, if I had $10,000, I would be buying preps to hell with the bank. Roger that minute, man. Oh man. It's a financial mind blowing. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. Just think most money is just ones and zeros folks. Uh, between the treasury department and the banks and how they just transfer just random stuff back. It, and I'm telling you, uh, I was watching, I don't know if it was Fox news. It was, it was somewhere I was watching and they were having a discussion. <laughs> Roger that. And let me throw that up on the screen. Cause that is, a, that's great. Um, if, if the feds start to increase the, uh, the interest rate, it's going to be a nasty situation. Um, I, I know Rudy's talked about it. Uh, one of the financial channels that I watch have talked about it. Are you fallout ready? Oh, <laughs> I'm looking at my Jeff. Are you in chat? Let me see how many years till the Bitcoin standard right in for red survival. Well, if you, if you, I don't know if you guys, I might've talked about it. I don't know, but you know, the feds created a task force for, uh, for, uh, cryptocurrency right uh the fbi now has a task force for cryptocurrency uh, it's very intriguing how things are playing out because they want to control everything they want to control everything and it should not be that way it should not be that way it should not be that way at all fiat smells like poop chemically sanitized the paper money <laughs> right on bringer of change uh Daily Purpose says, "Yep, I learned from my accountant decades ago to pay myself ten percent from ever from every from every check. Once it hit, tear up the supply of cash. Uh, and I went to fifteen percent. Right on. I worked to stay alive, not to make money. <laughs> right on, Minute Man. Let me see. I'm trying to see here in chat. Uh, we're getting close to that hour mark. And folks, I I'll be honest with you. I I'm dead tired. Uh, like I said, I was up to two o'clock in the morning on the Discord. Me and Harvey trying to get the information out to you as things were happening." Uh, I want to check something before, before I do something, I want to check something real quick, uh, here on YouTube before I do anything. And I will catch up with chat in just one second. Um, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. 
You pull that up and make it big. <laughs> so I'm going to just, whoops, didn't mean to do that one. Got to love live streams. I was making a mistake. Luckily, I didn't cut myself off. But I, I want to bring this back up. Uh, this is, like I said, this is Kiev, Sophia Square, Car. It's still very quiet. From my understanding, the troops were outside of Kiev. I don't know. I'm waiting to see what transpires uh, because if you look at the media, they're, they're saying that the fall of Kiev is imminent uh, within hours. But here we are. Uh, it still looks quiet. I don't see any fires. I don't see any tanks. I don't see anything. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But I wanted to bring that back up just to uh, just as a check in before we uh, you know end up signing off here on the on the stream. I don't know how to use Dragon Slayer. If you if you if you create a Discord account, uh, there's a lot of folks in there that can help you because we have a lot of newbies in Discord um, that can help you out. Thank you for Yarn for that. Truly appreciate that. Yeah, if you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, that's also that's a very appreciated. It's always nice to see that. That's a great way to support your favorite content creator. That and watching commercials. Texas T, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. And he wanted, I guess, let's bring that up there, since uh, my brother from another mother is in chat. Uh, he says, "How howdy, Rudy, love your channel." And again, thank you, Texas T, for the additional support. All right. Very peaceful for a country under siege. Chief Prepper, and that, that's what I'm saying. I'm very weirded out by what's transpiring, what I'm seeing in the media, and and all the other things that are floating around. Uh, I'll just be be bluntly honest with it. Uh, no matter how we look at it, we'll see how things play out. Uh, economically for the U.S., uh, I think things are going to get bad. And uh, you know, if I can wrap up this whole entire live stream uh, with my suggestion or my point of view to you folks out there is to uh, basically keep on prepping. Don't stop. Uh, I know prices are going to be going up uh, on food, uh, on everything, on, on gas. Every, everything is going to go up. Uh, truly, <laughs> Thank you again, Texas T, for the super chat. You're awesome, brother. I truly appreciate that. Yeah, Mary Beth, I did see that there in the subway uh, for uh, for fear of being bombed. Let me see. After those, I don't trust what I see on mainstream media. I agree, uh, Rome the gentleman. I agree, but um, like I was saying, is uh, folks just keep on prepping. You know, a lot of people will joke around. Uh, you know, with the word prepping uh, and preppers, and and they they, they kind of look at it as a joke, but it's not, folks. It's not. It's security for you and your family for any type of situation that happens to arise. Um, I wish more people in Ukraine. Uh, were prepared for what me because for months and months and months, uh, there was an inclination of this happening. And if they look at history, it was bound to happen sooner or later. And being that the people that are running this country right now, uh, a lot of folks, other countries see it as our government, uh, the people running our government currently are weak, specifically the commander in chief. So folks are going to do stuff. Uh, one last thing I also wanted to add to that is I I'm assuming, okay. So the Chinese flew over Taiwan today, and they do that a lot, right? But if you guys watch that clip in that video um, where it said when the Chinese were flying over, they, they made a statement in regards to that to the people in Taiwan. When they flew over Taiwan today, they said uh, something to the extent, not word for word what I'm saying, but they said something to the extent of uh, you Taiwan belongs to China. This is not Ukraine. So that might give you an inclination of what the Chinese may do here in the near future. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. It may happen to, uh, a few days from now, or it may happen a couple of years down the road. But it's another thing to watch. Uh, and we still have three years, roughly, of this administration. So we'll see how things play out. Uh, need you to remove the price sticker from your dad mug. You have moved it, and you aren't returning it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you guys notice the craziest stuff sometimes. No problem, man. Man, I'll never boot you, man. You're a good dude. It's not the same. Uh, Dragon, I wish I, I could uh, have more uh, uh, more substance to your comment. You're welcome. Uh, what did I, okay. I can't. I can't. I'm lost with that. <laughs> Anyways, folks. Um, again, 
uh, I'm going to be talking about, like I said, I really want you guys to, if you guys get a chance, look up that word, ideological subversion, ideological subversion. I'm going to talk more about that on the Sunday shift report. Um, it's quite intriguing to say the least. And I'm telling you folks, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the way the plan is laid out. Elizabeth, thank you so much for the super chat. Truly appreciate that. Bought two more five gallon diesel jugs at lunch today. Think fuel will become a cluster. I agree, Elizabeth. What's up, Mountain Grandma? How you doing? Um, I just want to make sure that I have everything wrapped up that I wanted to say and show. Um, I hope you guys got some value out of this live stream. Uh, I always hope that when I do a live stream and present information um, and share some of these ideas with you, uh, that you do find value out of the of the content that I'm producing uh, or going over. Um, yeah, Andy Bach. Yeah, D14. Thank you. Oh, man. Joyce, good night as well. Keep doing what we do. Exactly, his sweetie. That's all I can say. Salsa at all day 20 pounds jar has been $1.09. Now it's $1.58. Prices will be going up, folks. Prices will be going up. And then, like I, I've said it many, many times, as well as other folks out there, I don't see any uh, resolve anytime soon in regards to our economy and the things that are happening. And Rudy, thank you for coming out and hanging with us for a bit. I truly appreciate you, brother. It's always good to see you, my friend. Other than that, I think that about wraps it up, folks. I, I want to, you know, I'll see everybody on, on Sunday on the Sunday Shift Report, which is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the premiere that pops off there. And then we'll go again live Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I'll do the mail call and we'll have more of a, well, I mean, who knows? I, I'm planning to have just a good old-fashioned good chat, you know what I mean? But you know how that can play out sometimes because that's what I planned on doing tonight. And, you know, with all the things that happened, I figured you guys wanted to talk about this, this uh, kind of stuff that's going on. So other than that, I want to wish everyone uh, to have a safe weekend out there. Uh, stay aware, stay informed, uh, and just keep an eye out on things, right? Keep an eye out on things. <laughs> Anyways, you guys can tell I'm getting tired. But that being said, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in Rebound. God bless.